What? What was that in the handle? Oh, no. Oh, man. Well, welcome back, everyone, to another blade review. I have here in my hand a knife I was super excited to get my hands on because it's a collaboration from Bro Boker Plus with Dave Winger. Now, uh, he's been making knives for a while, he makes very premium uh, blades that have always caught my eye, some of his hatches and tomahawks. Really, really cool designs. I just haven't gotten my hands on one of the one of his specific blades yet. So when I saw that he was partnering uh, with Boker and having a mass-produced version of his pilot knife, I was like, I got to get my hands on that. Uh, so I ran over to Blade HQ. I paid 90 bucks for this blade, picked it up, and I just turned the camera on, done some basic use with it, and right away. I ran into an issue that I'm gonna share with you a little bit later. But, and so we're gonna do a completely different kind of style of video today, a discovery process of just what the capabilities, what limitations there are in this pilot knife design, which I, I always like this style. Okay, so we're gonna just do an edge test here. Nice, this is the factory edge. So that's great, particularly for like a narrow, you know, thick blade. A lot of times they're basically just sharpened pry bars. That's pretty good. So at the end, after all the other work I'm about to do, we'll see how that holds up. So I want to start right out with this saw back here. Let's uh, see how that does. Not bad. That's doing pretty good. That notch isn't bad at all. And that worked pretty quick. Now, I've always felt sawbacks from tops really just eat them up. So let's just see kind of similarities here. Wow. Okay. So I would say that Boker can easily do anything that that Steel Eagle could do in that sawback format. So that's a really good, quick way to make a notch, you know, for a trigger. Um, you know, something like that, a trap, trip wire, whatever. So it has a pretty sharp spine back here. It is coated. We'll see, uh, we'll see if we can get a spark going with it here. There we go. All right. There we go. Nice. So you do have about an inch and a half sharp point back there on the spine. Now I really like the style of the blade shape and that tip looks really tough. We're going to do a little stabbing here just to see how it penetrates and how it holds up. The blade is D2 on that, so it should hold up, you would think. Nice. Yeah, it's good. So the way it's designed, it's, remo it's stabbing in and then kind of rocking itself out so that you're not going to as likely snap the tip if you were having to do some sort of prying. And when I was stabbing, my the flares there worked really well to keep my hand in place so I wasn't wanting to slide down and hurt myself. Let's do a quick little sharpened point here. Again, good ergos for this style. Definitely removing the, the meat of the wood. So I'm pleased with that not having to put a ton of extra energy, you know, into the push to get the meat of the wood removed. There we go. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I thought I cinched these down pretty good. Are they backing themselves out? Uh, so the sheath, the sheath uh, is, I'm about 50-50 on. It's kydex, it's thin kydex. It's got lots of lashing points, a drainage hole, a good thumb ramp to easily deploy, and then you are ready to rock and roll. There's no walk up that you have to do on the blade or anything like that. So it's ambidextrous. Now it's gonna come with, I've had this on other bokers before, they're kind of like take on a blade tech lock. It's very flexible, has a little bit of adjustment points uh, and a you know, little, you know, portions that you can screw it onto, but the, these screws are loosening up on me again. Um, it's really, really flexible and uh, it, it's fine just to like throw on your belt and walk around camp, but I don't really trust this clip 
to even go like on a hike with, to do overnight backpacking like I do um, with it, and definitely not to lash, you know, if you were a pilot or something like that. You would definitely want to either do paracord or some sort of blade tech lock or molly lock uh, to lash this properly to really have a secure mounting option. It has a little bit of rock. We're going to do the throw test, see if it'll come out. It does. So the tension. Um, you know, it's not bad if you're just carrying it on your belt. I, I probably wouldn't carry that in a reverse unless you did a little heating around the guard portion here and just tightened it up a little bit. But for tip down carry on your belt or a rig should be fine. So uh, it's better than nylon and it gives you more lashing options than leather, but there are some issues just uh, with the clip that I would replace um, and tension is so-so upside down. So do some easier, just like rope and cordage. That was easy, very nice. How about a leather belt here? So, I mean, that's performing very well. Got some hammock strap, kind of representing, you know, a seat belt, that type of material. As a pilot knife, you definitely want to be able to go through paracord and, you know, that type of stuff easily. Do a double hit of this paracord here. Easy, easy. Okay, so edge geometry for cordage and those type of materials, really well done. Go ahead and pop a few zip ties here. Just see, oh yeah, nice, okay. So I got some pretty thin aluminum here, just representing the body of an aircraft. You know, this is a pilot knife. Let's just see. I mean, that was able to cut through that. Now, the teeth obviously do snag some when you're trying to pull back out. So you'd have to stab and kind of force through. Yeah, you can see there, a little tough to pull out just because of the teeth, but it is stabbing easily. I was able to cut through that hole portion there. And so what that's saying is that this has a very good edge for utility. We're about to do a little woodworking, but your utility that would tend to be more what this knife would be used for the edge geometry with the flat grind, saber grind, you know, it has a very low, strong, thick blade. The grind is low. I mean, um, it, but the edge geometry is good for this style. And a lot of styles like this wouldn't be able to quite compete with what I'm seeing. Okay. So now that we've got all the utility out of the way, let's go ahead and try out some woodscraft, you know, fire prep basically with it. Let's just do some batoning here. Oh yeah. I figured as much with that, sh uh, like when I say short, I'm meaning uh, the grind comes up to the flat, like right here. So it's a very short grind. It's not like a high saber grind or a full flat grind is what I mean by that. Um, and at three sixteenths, yeah. I mean, it's almost like a wedge. That's great. So if you had to break down some kindling, obviously the, the saw back and the swedge are gonna kind of damage your batoning stick. But I mean, there's some twists in that. Now this isn't super hard wood, this is just some pine, but for just about a five inch knife, that's good, just over five inches. Yeah, sweet. Okay, but all right. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here with the handle we got to discuss um, that I discovered just as I had started testing. You saw at the beginning of the video, I'm going to break it down for you in just a moment. But uh, G10 handle scales, like 4. Point, I don't know, 8, I think, on the overall length, 0.8 on the thickness. It's great. I mean, it's ergonomic. It's rounded. A lot of tactical knives are really clunky and square and blocky. This is rounded and contoured. has a little flare out the back. I could obviously run a lanyard through that. I love the tubes and, and um, just their placement, just kind of what they do to offset the look. So the aesthetics are nice. The guard slightly there, a little bit more there. Real good, no choil, just a little bit of a sharpening ricasso. So, I mean, you're really in control. The design of the blade is excellent. I love the design and the ergonomics feel really good um, for, you know, harder tasks, but also keep me in place. So I'm not gonna actually slide up and hurt myself, you know, like we've been discussing. So let's go ahead, let's do some feather sticks and we'll get to that portion that I'm seeing here. Now, of course, this isn't, you know, like a scanty ground mora or something, you know, that's just gonna make feathers uh, pop. But 
for this style of blade. That's pretty impressive right there. I like that. Good carving for this style of knife again. Not going to compete with thin, scanty, or, you know, full flat knives. Not bad there. Not bad. So I'll see, I may have to run photos here, but there you go. You can see it pretty pronounced there. The lip that has now occurred because the handle scales are shifting. So when I pound the back spine, they go up like that. And I can literally, let's see if you guys can hear this. You can hear that click. Just with my hand pressure, move it down. Now that's all gone and it's almost too low. And it now has moved to the bottom. There you go. And it shifts around on the pommel too. So I mean the whole all the, the handle scales are shifting because there's too much tolerance with those um, mounting points for the scales. So I was concerned about that, knowing that this is mass produced overseas, you know, versus high attention to detail um, blades that are coming out of Dave's shop. Uh, was it gonna be able to hold up and with the style of these tubed attachment points for the scales versus just screws? If they were screws, I could just tighten them down. We're good to go, I'm done, and I keep on working. Um, that happens, you know, sometimes with different handle scale blades. But because of the way this is designed, I can't do anything. I have to now reach out to Boker's warranty. I've never operated with Boker's warranty before, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, and, and I do look forward to hearing from you guys. If you own a pilot knife from Boker in this style, how did it perform? Did you have similar issues? Has that been happening or is this just like a fluke? Um, I look forward to hearing from you guys in that sense. What this does is it makes me want to definitely get one of his main um, you know, factory produced ones that he produces uh, in this style. And so that's something that definitely makes me want to do because if, if this is performing outside the shifting of the scales like this, I mean, that's pretty sweet. Just to do the, the D2 steel, how does it hold up after all that? Just like before we tested it, just out of the gate. So, I mean, that's pretty sweet that the D2 is holding up well, 90 bucks. I just wish those scales weren't shifting, man, and I could just fix it, just screw it, just screws, I could tighten it down, or if it was injected molded. So just for competitive options, the Gerber strong arm, now it's like 90 or $100, but USA made, 428C, you know, I mean, this has been through hell and back, bomb proof, uh, and it's got that, you know, glass over mold with the rubberized, you know, the handle's tight, but very similar style profile, if you're just interested in this, but maybe, because of what I'm pointing out, something you'd rather go in a different direction. And here's a more Garberg if you want more of like, you like the, the colors and the profile, but you want something more woodscraft. Here's the more Garberg in carbon uh, as well of all these in the links below, and as well as some of the other bokers that are being produced like this from Dave. Uh, you know, but this is scanty ground, eighth of an inch thick, but kind of a similar profile if you like it, but you just want to go, you know, more woodscraft direction. But I want to hear from you guys. Appreciate you so much. Um, and looking forward to hearing your thoughts and your take on these Boker Produce Dave uh, Winger designs. And uh, have you had good success? I always appreciate all that feedback. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber, guys, so you can see all your gear that you're interested in being tested and reviewed and giving you breakdowns so you can make wise choices uh, when you're throwing your hard-earned money after gear that you're interested in. So until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. I'll see you out there.